The hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such people to worship him. Morning has broken like the first morning. Blackbird has spoken like the first bird. Praise for the singing. Praise for the morning. Praise for them springing fresh from the word. Sweet the rain's new fall, sunlit from heaven, like the first dew fall on the first grass. Praise for the sweetness of the wet garden, sprung in completeness where his feet pass. Mine is the sunlight, mine is the morning, born of the one light Eden saw play. Praise with elation, praise every morning, God's recreation of a new day. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent, according to your promises declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Grant to your faithful people, most merciful Lord, pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are all the depths of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tested me and put me to the proof though they had seen my works. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation and said, It is a people that err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways, of whom I swore in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. O come, let us adore him. The portion of the Psalter to be read for today is Psalm 106, verses 1 through 18. O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is gracious, and his mercy endures forever. Who can express the mighty acts of the Lord, or show forth all his praise? Blessed are those who act with justice, and who always do righteousness. Remember me, O Lord, according to the favor that you show to your people. O visit me with your salvation, that I may see the felicity of your chosen, and rejoice in the gladness of your people and give thanks with your inheritance. We have sinned like our fathers. We have done wrong and dealt wickedly. Our fathers regarded not your wonders in Egypt, neither did they keep your great goodness in remembrance, but were disobedient at the sea, even at the Red Sea. Nevertheless, he saved them for his name's sake, that he might make his power known. He rebuked the Red Sea, and it was dried up, so he led them through the deep as through a wilderness. And he saved them from the adversary's hand and delivered them from the hand of the enemy. As for those who troubled them 
The waters overwhelmed them. There was not one of them left. Then they believed his words and sang praises unto him. But soon they forgot his works and would not wait for his counsel. A craving came upon them in the wilderness, and they tempted God in the desert. So he gave them their desire and sent leanness into their soul. They were envious of Moses also in the camp and of Aaron, the Holy One of the Lord. So the earth opened up and swallowed up Dathan and covered the company of Abraham. And fire was kindled in their company and flame burnt up the ungodly. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel, chapter 1. After the death of Saul, when David had returned from striking down the Amal Amalekites, David remained two days in Ziklag. And on the third day, behold, a man came from Saul's camp with his clothes torn and dirt on his head. And when he came to David, he fell to the ground and paid homage. David said to him, Where do you come from? And he said to him, I have escaped from the camp of Israel. And David said to him, How did it go? Tell me. And he answered, The people fled from the battle, and also many of the people have fallen and are dead, and Saul and his son Jonathan are also dead. Then David said to the young man who told him, How do you know that Saul and his son Jonathan are dead? And the young man who told him said, By chance I happened to be on Mount Gilboa, and there was Saul leaning on his spear, and behold, the chariots and horsemen were close upon him. And when he looked behind him, he saw me and called to me, and I answered, Here I am. And he said to me, Who are you? I answered him, I am an Amalekite. And he said to me, Stand beside me and kill me, for anguish has seized me, and yet my life still lingers. So I stood beside him and killed him, because I was sure that he could not live after he had fallen. And I took the crown that was on his head, and the armlet that was on his arm, and I have brought them here to my Lord. Then David took hold of his clothes and tore them, and so did all the men who were with him. And they mourned and wept and fasted until evening for Saul and for Jonathan his son, and for the people of the Lord and for the house of Israel, because they had fallen by the sword. And David said to the young man who told him, Where do you come from? And he, and he answered, I am the son of a sojourner, an Amalekite. David said to him, How is it you were not afraid to put your hand to destroy the Lord's anointed? Then David called one of the young men and said, Go, execute him. And he struck him down so that he died. And David said to him, Your blood be on your head, for your own mouth has testified against you, saying, I have killed the Lord's anointed. And David lamented with his lamentation over Saul and Jonathan his son. And he said it should be taught to the people of Judah. Behold, it is written in the book of Jasser. He said, your glory, O Israel, is slain on your high places. How the mighty have fallen. Tell it not in Gath. Publish it not in the streets of Ashkelon. Least the daughters of the Philistines rejoice. Least the daughters of the uncircumcised exalt. You mountains of Gilboa, let there be no dew or rain upon you, nor fields of offerings. For there the shield of the mighty was defiled, the shield of Saul not anointed with oil. From the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan turned not back, and the sword of Saul returned not empty. Saul and Jon Jonathan, beloved and lovely, in life and in death, they were not divided. They were swifter than eagles, they were stronger than lions. Your daughters of Israel weep over Saul, who clothed you luxuriously in scarlet, who put ornaments of gold on your apparel. How the mighty have fallen in the midst of the battle. Jonathan lies slain on your high places. I am distressed for you, my brother Jonathan. Very pleasant have you been to me. Your love to me was extraordinary, surpassing the love of women. How the mighty have fallen, and the weapons of war perished. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Glorify the Lord, all you works of the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. In the firmament of his power, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, you angels and all powers of the Lord. O heavens and all waters above the heavens, sun and moon and stars of the sky, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, every shower of rain and fall of dew, all winds and fire and heat, winter and summer, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O chill and cold, drops of dew and flakes of snow, frost and cold, ice and sleet, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O nights and days, O shining light and unfolding dark, storm clouds and thunderbolts, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Let the earth glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O mountains and hills, and all that grows upon the earth. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O springs of water, seas and streams, O whales and all that move in the waters. All birds of the air, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O beasts of the wild, and all you flocks and herds. O men and women everywhere, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Let the people of God glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O priests and servants of the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O spirits and souls of the righteous. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. You that are holy and humble of heart, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Let us glorify the Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. In the firmament of his power, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. A reading from Paul's epistle to the Romans, chapter 13. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resist what God has appointed, and those who resist will incur judgment. For rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Would you have no fear of the one who is in authority? Then do what is good, and you will receive his approval. For he is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. For he is the servant of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Therefore, one must be in subjection, not only to avoid God's wrath, but also for the sake of conscience. For because of this, you also pay taxes. For the authorities are ministers of God, attending to this very thing. Pay to all what is owed to them, taxes to whom taxes are owed, revenue to whom revenue is owed, respect to whom respect is owed, honor to whom honor is owed. Owe no one anything except to love each other, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know the time, that the hour has come for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. The night is far gone. The day is at hand. So then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the daytime not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and sensuality, not in quarreling and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth. O King of all the ages, who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you are 
for you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the key, I believe, to understanding this morning's reading from Romans 13 can be found in the first two verses of Romans 12. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. That is what Christian discipleship is all about. As Christians, we are called not to conform to the morality of the non-Christian world, which often seems that we will have to swim against, which often means that we will have to swim against the stream. I would like to focus on Romans 13:12, where Paul says, The night is far gone, the day is at hand. So, then, let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Brothers and sisters, the deeds of darkness are clear enough for, for example, the avarice, greed, and uncaring attitude that we see so often around us and the lack of social justice in the world. But what you might ask is the armor of light. I would like to suggest that the armor of light equates to the armor of God in Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. In Ephesians 6, 10 through 20, Paul tells us to put on the full armor of God, and he enumerates this as follows. Stand firm, then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition, take up the shield of faith, which with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. The armor of God, the armor of light is, I suggest, all to do with lifestyle. Do we have truth in our lives, righteousness in our lives, a readiness to preach the gospel, faith in our lives, an assurance of salvation, time with the Word of God, the Bible, and praying in the Spirit. These make for a powerful lifestyle. Each of those seven aspects of the armor of God would make a sermon in itself. Paul, in Romans 13:12, is saying that we must choose to live a radical lifestyle, a lifestyle dedicated to Jesus. Brothers and sisters, the good news of Jesus Christ is that not only are we redeemed and reconciled to God through Christ's death on the cross, we are invited into a new life in Christ. The gospel is not just about getting to heaven, but rather experiencing the abundant life that Christ offers us, which begins here and now on this earth. If we start to live that abundant life here on earth, then death becomes, as one commentator put it, only a minor transition from this life to the greater life. St. Paul said to the Christians in Corinth that, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Being a new creation must result in living a new lifestyle. Jesus gave the church only one commission, and that was to preach the gospel to all nations. How we live will affect how successful we are in that commission. Most people initially respond to the gospel, either positively or negatively, by how they like the lifestyle of the Christians they know. Brothers and sisters, you may not know that Mohandas Gandhi, the famous Indian statesman, was at one time very close to becoming a Christian. In his early life, he was very attracted to the teachings of Jesus, so much so that when he was in South Africa, he went into a Dutch Reformed church to ask the pastor to tell him more about Christ. However, this was in a time of apartheid, and instead of being allowed to meet the pastor, the church wardens physically picked him up and hurled him out of the church building. Why? 
because he was a Kaffa, because he wasn't white. That put Gandhi off to Christianity for life, though he maintained a great love for the teachings of Jesus. However, the gospel is promoted when we live a holy life. Maximilian Kolbe, 1894-1941, was a Catholic priest who was put in the Nazi concentration camp at Auschwitz for his faith. During this time there, he would share his meager rations of food with those around him who were hungry. A Protestant doctor who treated the patients in Kobe's block said that Kobe would not let himself be treated before any other prisoners in that block. He sacrificed himself for the other prisoners. The doctor said about Kobe, from my observations, the virtues in the servant of God were no mon momentary impulse such as are often found in men. They sprang from a habitual practice deeply woven into his personality. One day, a man in Colby's block escaped. At the end of the day, the man that had escaped was not found, and so the Nazi commandant told the prisoners that ten men would be selected to die in the starvation cell in place of the one that had escaped. One man, a Polish sergeant, Francis Gejovinitschek, who was selected, begged to be spared. He was worried that his family would not be able to survive without him. As he was pleading with the com commandant, Maximilian Kobe silently stepped forward and said, I am a Catholic priest from Poland. I would like to take his place because he has a wife and children. The commandant stood silent for a moment in disbelief. He then allowed the sergeant to go back to his place in the ranks, and Kobe took his place in the starvation bunker. Each day, the guards removed the bodies of those who had died. However, instead of the usual screaming and cursing, all they could hear was the sounds of Kobe and the others in the bunker singing hymns and praying. When Kobe couldn't speak any longer due to hunger and lack of energy, he would whisper his prayers. After two weeks, the cell had to be cleared out for more prisoners, and so the guards injected Colby with a lethal injection on August 14, 1941. He paid the ultimate price for following his master. Brothers and sisters, although I would differ from him theologically on many points, for example, his adoration of the Blessed Virgin Mary, I admire his commitment to Christ. I wish I could live like him. A radical lifestyle can speak volumes. As one commentator said, we cannot preach the good news and be the bad news. When we become Christians, we become new creations. This means that we live new lifestyles. Our motivation for living changes. We now follow Christ. Jesus wants us to put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. The question I must ask myself is, do I really want to give up the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light or not? Because without it, I cannot truly be a disciple of Jesus. Amen and amen. Let us now profess our faith as it is summarized in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us and grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide those who govern us and lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness and let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people and bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and take not your Holy Spirit from us. Almighty God, give us the increase of faith, hope, and love, and that we may obtain what you have promised. Make us love what you command, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, our Heavenly Father, you raised up your faithful servant, Jeremy Taylor, to be a bishop and pastor in your church and to feed your flock. Give abundantly to all pastors the gifts of your Holy Spirit, that they may minister in your household as true servants of Christ and stewards of your divine mysteries. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, who after the creation of the world rested from all your works and sanctified a day of rest for all your creatures, grant that we, putting away all earthly anxieties, may be duly prepared for the service of your sanctuary, and that our rest here upon the earth may be a preparation for the eternal rest promised to your people in heaven, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who alone works great marvels, send down upon your clergy and the, and the congregations committed to their charge the life-giving spirit of your grace. Shower them with the continual dew of your blessing and ignite in them a zealous love of your gospel. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O worship the King, all glorious above. O grateful sing his power and his love. Our shield and defender, the ancient of days, pavilioned in splendor and girded with praise. O tell of his might, O sing of his grace, whose robe is the light, whose canopy space, his chariots of wrath, the deep thunder clouds form, and dark is his path on the wings of the storm. The earth with its store of wondrous wonders untold, almighty thy power hath founded of old, hath established it fast by a changeless decree, and round it hath cast, like a mantle, the sea. Thy bountiful care, what tongue can recite? It breathes in the air, it shines in the light. It streams from the hills, it descends to the plain, and sweetly distills in the dew and the rain. Frail children of dusk, and, feel, and feeble as frail, in thee do we trust, nor find thee to fail. Thy mercies, how tender, how firm to the end, our Maker, Defender, Redeemer, and Friend. Let us now pray for our own needs and those of others. Heavenly Father, Grant these our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Tell out, my soul, the greatness of the Lord. Unnumbered blessings give my spirit voice. Tender to me the promise of his word. In God my Savior shall my heart rejoice. Tell out, my soul, the greatness of his name. Make known his might, the deeds his arm has done. His mercy sure from age the same. His holy name, the Lord, the mighty one. Tell out, my soul, the greatness of his might. Powers and dominions lay their glory by. Proud hearts and stubborn wills are put to flight. The hungry fed, the humble lifted high. Tell out, my soul, the glories of his word. Firm in is his promise and his mercy sure. Tell out, my soul, the greatness of the Lord to children's children and forevermore. 
Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, are un we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will grant their request. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen.